data cleaning is a really important step in analyses. In fact, if you don't have clean data, if you have really noisy, ugly, artifact-ridden data, it's pretty unlikely that you are going to get good results out of any kind of analysis that you apply. So it's important to start with clean data. Now, cleaning data is a, not only a really big topic in data analysis, it's also a really difficult topic to cover in a kind of non-specific way. And that is because the appropriate, the optimal data cleaning strategies tend to vary widely depending on the kind of equipment you're using, the kind of experiment you're running, the kinds of analyses you plan on applying. And so it's generally not possible to give one simple lecture that will cover data cleaning for everyone that will always be appropriate. So instead, what I'm going to do in this video is talk a little bit about the kinds of artifacts that you will often see in EEG data. And I'll talk a little bit about which artifacts you should worry about and remove from the data and which artifacts are safe to ignore. And so the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to show a couple of slides of EEG data. So you already saw pictures that look something like this, showing this EEG data viewer. This comes from the toolbox EEG lab. And then I'm just going to talk a little bit about the kinds of things that you can see on these data. So I strongly recommend doing visual based artifact rejection. So that means that before you start analyzing your data, it's a good idea to look through all of the data. You can see I have all, in this case, 60, well, 64 scalp channels and then a handful of uh, external channels. So it's around 70 channels here and I'm looking at all of them. And this particular plot spans 10 trials. So we can just visualize all the data from 10 trials here. And then we can continue this and look through all the data for all the trials in the experiment, all of the data epochs. I believe that it's really important to have a at least a quick cursory glance at all of the raw data before getting into the analyses that will help you get a feel for uh, whether there are artifacts, what kinds of artifacts there are, and anything weird that you might see in, in different uh, channels or different epochs. So the idea is that you look at the data rather quickly. You don't want to spend a huge amount of time. And when you see big artifacts in the data, you can identify those data epochs and simply remove them or make a decision about whether you think that it might be possible to isolate and separate out that artifact. So here you see these 64 channels. As I mentioned briefly, these are actually not EEG channels. These are other channels in the data set. In this case, they are channels from the muscles in the fingers that the uh, research participant was using to press buttons on a response box. So these channels look really wild. And if you were just looking at these data and you didn't know anything about the experiment, then you might come to the conclusion that these channels are all horribly artifact ridden and should be removed. In fact, these are muscle uh, measuring muscle activity, not brain activity. So these channels are all fine. One thing that you can see that's prominent in these data is these big deflections here like this and this. You can see they span not all the channels, but you can see it on many channels. So these turn out to be eye blinks. This is each time the subject blinked his eye or her eye. I, don't, I have no idea where this data set comes from. So each time the participant blinked their eye, you see this large deflection. This comes from some combination of the muscles and the eyes and the eyeball spinning around a little bit. And that creates these large electrical deflections that are measured in EEG. You can see that these eye blink artifacts are orders of magnitude larger than the normal EEG. So the normal, you know, brain driven EEG are these tiny little wiggles in here, We're really zoomed out on this picture. And then you see these huge deflections. Now it turns out that a procedure called independent components analysis will nicely isolate these blink components and allow you to separate the blink component from the brain driven data without having to remove the data. So you don't actually need to remove uh, data based on the presence of a blink artifact. That kind of artifact will easily come out in the uh, independent components analysis.
And then there's another couple of small artifacts that you see here. So for example, you can see there's this really transient burst of high frequency activity right here. Now it looks like this is separate, but actually these are the same event. You can see this marker is also the same. 1018 is the same here and here. So when you cut epochs in your data like this, it sometimes happens that you have overlapping epochs. So you have repeated data in the epoch series. So we can ask whether we should reject this trial, whether we should remove this trial of data, the entire trial, because of this tiny little artifact here. Now, this is the case where things start to get a little bit subjective because you can probably find some people who would say, yes, this is an artifact and we should reject the data. In my opinion, I would say that this is fine. This is a little bit of an artifact, but you can see it's pretty restricted. So it's restricted both in time, it's very transient, and it's also very restricted in space. It's mostly present on these very anterior channels that are really on the forehead here. So these are you know, FP1, this is frontal polar, and these are just really anterior channels up here. So I think part of the reason why we collect a lot of data from many, many trials, many, many, you know, minutes of resting state, whatever is your experiment, you're collecting a lot of data. And so the reason why you collect a lot of data is to be able to make sure your analyses are robust to small little, you know, kind of weird non-representative samples like this. So when I see a tiny artifact like this, I would just leave it in there. Okay, here we see a different screen. This is showing a much larger artifact. So it looks a little bit similar to what I showed on the previous screen where you see a lot of like dense high frequency activity, but here it's both longer in time and it's also really distributed in space. So basically every electrode or probably every single electrode shows this artifact. So the question is, what caused this artifact? This was probably something mechanical that the individual, the subject, the research participant was doing with the cap. Maybe they were scratching their head. Maybe they were, you know, sort of pushing on the EEG cap or something. Maybe they were spinning their head around. I think there is a cognitive reason why this artifact is present. The subject was, I think, distracted from the task. He or she was not really paying attention in this time window because they were doing something with the EEG cap. So therefore, I would remove this trial. Here you see another example of a little artifact that, you know, it's a little bit annoying to have these kinds of small artifacts. But again, when you collect a lot of data, you don't have to worry about throwing out this entire trial just because of this one really temporally brief and also spatially localized artifact. So you can see it's a little bit subjective. Here's where it also starts getting subjective. This is a similar looking artifact to what I showed in the previous slide that I said should be removed. And here I'm not so sure whether this trial needs to be removed from the data. You can see that this artifact is brief. It starts right at the beginning of the data epoch. So this is one data epoch. This is a trial. This is the next trial. So you can see this is only happening in the very, very beginning. And we get normal EEG again by the time that we get to uh, the time equals zero marker, which was the, the trial onset, the visual stimulus that appeared on the computer screen. Now, you will learn later in this course, in the section on time frequency analysis, that there are th this phenomenon when you filter data, it's called an edge effect. And essentially what happens is when you're doing a time frequency analysis, you get artifacts, you get uninterpretable data at the very beginning of the uh, data epoch and also at the very end of the data epoch. And so the solution, the, the, the best solution for dealing with edge artifacts is to cut off the data after you apply the time frequency analysis. So I call that the buffer zone. So you want to create a bit of a buffer zone in the data to absorb these edge effects that come from filtering. So again, you will learn more about why that happens later on in the course. But the reason why I mention it here is that this little artifact is in the buffer zone. And so I'm going to throw out this window of time anyway after doing the filtering. So therefore, I would say to leave this uh, trial in the data set because all of the rest of the data here are valid.
Okay, so here is one more picture that I'm going to show here and discuss. You can see there are uh, two kinds of artifacts that you see in this picture. One is this brief EMG burst over here. And you can see this is actually not so temporally brief. This spans a little bit more than half a second. So this is quite a, you know, it's a relatively long period of time for an artifact. But it is kind of spatially restricted, so it doesn't affect all of these channels. If we look at what channels it affects, these are the posterior lateral channels. So maybe the subject was, you know, maybe they, they twitched their shoulder or something briefly or sort of moved their ear or something that caused some muscle activity that infected the EEG signal here. So now, you know, whether to remove the trial, this entire trial, this yellow period, just based on this artifact, this one gets a little bit difficult to say. It is right around the time that we might be interested in analyzing the data. So it kind of depends on where on the, on the scalp you are, you are most interested in looking for effects. For example, if your study is all about frontal cortex processing, you're actually not really going to be paying much attention to the electrodes in the back of the head. So therefore, an artifact like this is actually not going to affect all the frontal channels, which are all in here. You can see these data look perfect. They look really nice. They look very clean. Another possibility is to run independent components analysis and see whether the ICA will isolate a particular component that reflects this EMG activity. And if it does, then it might be possible to remove that component, to project that component out of the data and thereby remove this EMG artifact without affecting the underlying data that's kind of, you know, summed on top, that's mixed together with this EMG signal. Okay, so this is a little bit difficult to say unambiguously whether this trial should be rejected. And then we have this other artifact here, and it looks like there's just something weird happening with this electrode. You can see it's kind of normal looking EEG activity, and then it jumps up, and then here it jumps up, and then it's jumping down. So there's looks like there's real brain activity plus some electrical artifact that's happening simultaneously. So these kinds of artifacts can also be difficult to know what to do with. So you have a few options for how to address these kinds of artifacts. One, one thing you can do, so one option, is just to completely remove that electrode from the data and then interpolate it. So, you know, mathematically calculate what, that act, what the activity at that electrode could be based on what the neighboring electrodes look like. So that could be an okay solution, except that it looks like there's real brain activity plus this little artifact. And I usually try to avoid removing a channel entirely only because of a, uh, an artifact if that channel also has real brain signal on it. Now, if this uh, artifact happened only, let's say once, maybe it was only this one trial and it never happened again, then I would probably just reject this one trial and then that's fine. You could combine these two methods that I just suggested and do single trial, single channel interpolation. So let's say this channel was, you know, funky only on these four trials and the rest of the data set, maybe there's 500 trials. So four out of 500 trials have this kind of wonky artifact and the rest of the trials look fine. So therefore you could interpolate these this one channel only on these four trials and not on the rest of the data set. A third option would be to run independent components analysis and see whether ICA will deter will isolate an artifact that just relates to uh, or yeah that isolates this artifact alone. Now in my experience sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't work. When I say it doesn't work, I mean the um, artifact will be mixed in within the independent components, it will get mixed in with signal. So it won't be possible to separate out this artifact, this jump here, from the underlying brain activity. So unfortunately, these kinds of things are annoying. Really, the best thing to do is when you are collecting the data in the first place, if you are running the experiment, then you should keep a close eye on the data and if you notice that an electrode is going wonky like this, then you can, if possible, it depends a bit on the experiment, but if possible, you can go pause the experiment and go into the experiment, 
chamber, the EEG recording chamber, and try to fix this electrode to avoid having this problem in the first place. So that's a few examples of different kinds of artifacts that you might see in EEG data. I hope you can appreciate that cleaning data is really important, but it's also a little bit dependent on the specific kind of data you have and what you are looking for and what are the other common procedures that are used in the lab that you work in. So it's difficult for me to say unambiguously how to address every kind of signal artifact. But I will say that data cleaning is really important. You should do a really careful, meticulous job cleaning all of your data. It will make the rest of your analyses much smoother, much easier, and much better.